It's the kind of twisted tale the police say is not exactly uncommon in upscale Carlsbad, California, an elite and idyllic coastal enclave a little north of San Diego. We don't have a lot of crime, but when we do have crime, they are very violent and very bizarre. This particular violent and bizarre crime beginning with a late night 911 call from a secluded area of town. Hello, this is 911. Yes, yeah. uh, my friend has just been shot. It appears to be a failed assassination attempt. Do you know who shot him? There's a guy lying down like a sniper. A sniper? Did you see him at all? Briefly, we saw the, the gun and he shot at us like six or seven times. One of the bullets hitting 46-year-old computer programmer Greg Mulvihill in the left side of his chest. He's bleeding pretty black. And Greg's fading fast. My friend's getting lightheaded. That's okay. I got paramedics in route, okay? I'll have officers in route. I got help out to you, okay? Greg is rushed to emergency surgery where doctors learn the bullet just missed his heart. At the same time, police are hunting for what they fear may be an armed maniac on the loose. Initially, you all thought you had an active shooter situation, and yes. this whole place was almost like on a lockdown. Right. We didn't know what we had in, um, at the time of the call. It wasn't until we got more information that it started sounding less like a random attack and more like a purposeful event. But who would want Greg assassinated? The handsome computer programmer had married his high school sweetheart, Diana Lovejoy, a pretty fitness instructor and champion triathlete shown promoting her own recipes for women on the go in this YouTube cooking video. I'm Diana Lovejoy and quick meals are my specialty. Greg and Diana had been married for seven years and went through eight heartbreaking miscarriages before giving birth to their only child, a son. The struggles to have a baby reportedly added stress to their relationship and they sought marriage counseling, but the damage was done. They made a beautiful little boy, but once that was done, um, that was, once they conceived, that was the end of their marital relationship. But Greg told detectives that despite their animosity toward each other, he couldn't believe Diana would ever want their three-year-old son to be left without a father. And Diana seemed more like the perfect working single mom than a would-be killer. I really like to cook, but I'm often short on time, so speed is the hook. But detectives would soon come to suspect Diana may have also been cooking up something else altogether. Especially after Greg told detectives why he went to the spot of the ambush. When you're interviewing the victim at this point, is he in the hospital? Yes, in the hospital after surgery from his injury. He had told us uh, that he had received a phone call at around 10.30 at night from a, an unknown number to him. That caller identifying himself as a private investigator saying he had information that could help Greg in a bitter divorce and custody battle he was waging with his now estranged wife, Diana Lovejoy. He wanted to see it. He needed to come to a location um, within a certain amount of time and look at the information, see if he wanted to buy it from him. When he's released from the hospital, Greg would return to the scene of the crime with detectives to show them exactly what happened when he arrived at the appointed meeting place with friend Jason Kovach at his side. Greg Mulvihill was um, holding a flashlight or a bike light mm -hmm. and um, his friend was holding like a mini bat kind of like for some protection. And police would make this video recreation of Greg's account of the frightening events. He is scanning the area. When his light suddenly falls on something moving in the bushes. When he immediately knew that that was a person laying down that was holding a rifle aimed at him. Greg and his buddy Jason panic. But one of them yelled gun as soon as they saw that it was a gun and they both ran. Greg getting hit when the gunman fires shot after shot at them as they flee. So they run off this way and the shooter runs that way. The shooter runs that way. It doesn't take long for detectives to figure out that Greg had been lured into a planned death trap and they immediately become suspicious of Greg's estranged wife, Diana, when they go to her house around three in the morning 
just hours after the shooting to tell her what happened to him. Why were the detectives so suspicious of her reaction? Giggling just wasn't appropriate reaction to finding out the father of your child had just been shot and was in the hospital. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Greg Mulvihill is lucky to be alive after being lured into what police call a death trap. It's not like he didn't get a life-threatening injury. We just happened to live in a time where we have excellent medical care and he lived. Investigators wonder if Greg's estranged wife, Diana Lovejoy, may have had something to do with what looks like an attempt to kill him. So are you immediately thinking wife as a suspect? Not at that point. No. Not necessarily. But detectives would grow more suspicious when they learned Diana and Greg had been having problems throughout a stormy seven-year marriage, which had effectively ended when their three-year-old son was conceived. Mr. Malva Hill stated that was the last time that they were intimate with one another after she found out she was pregnant with the little boy. And they basically lived as strangers in the same house. The couple eventually separated. The next two years were spent locked in an ugly battle over alimony, child support, and custody issues. And it would only grow more bitter when a divorce court judge eventually ruled Diana would have to pay Greg half the worth of the house they'd lived in before separating. How much money are we talking about? She had three months to give him $120,000 cash. Diana is said to have been furious and even more angry that the judge had awarded 50-50 custody of their child. She wanted complete possession of that little boy. Detectives theorize she may have been prepared to kill him to get her way. Did you do any interviews with Diana Lovejoy? I did the interviews. Initially, she tried to distance herself as much as possible. Detectives have no evidence to link Diana to Greg's shooting until they uncover this store security video of Diana buying a cheap burner phone. And it's a phone number detectives recognize. Turns out it's the very same phone used by the mystery man who called Greg, luring him to this remote meeting spot with the ruse of selling information to help him in his divorce battle with Diana. And what was her reaction to that? She tried to come up with a new version of events that had happened. Diana now tells detectives she bought the phone for a man she hired to scare her husband into giving up his child custody rights before their divorce became final. Hello? Diana would identify the man as Weldon uh, McDavid Jr. Now I'm ready. A local gun instructor, she says, had been giving her shooting lessons so she could defend herself against Greg, whom she claims was abusing her and their little boy. She had made accusations that he sexually assaulted her, was molesting the child, was a drug abuser. Diana told detectives she'd seen a report on NBC's Dateline in 2013 when McDavid was hailed as a hero for helping another woman, Crystal Harris. He claimed he was helping Harris protect herself from an allegedly abusive husband. I asked her, are you prepared to kill him? Because that is a very real possibility. McDavid says in the report that he'd given Crystal shooting lessons too. And after a few moments, she said, yes, if I have to. But Crystal didn't have to. Diana tells detectives it was never her intention to have McDavid kill or hurt Greg unless it became necessary. She also lets us know that there was eventually a plan to either have Weldon McDavid scare her husband or murder her husband and call law enforcement. Detectives say Diana used all her charm to talk McDavid into helping her. Did you talk to either of them about whether they were having a sexual relationship? They had had sex one time, um, and she felt it was a mistake because he was married and had a brand new couple of month old baby. And she says McDavid finally agreed to help her. She told us that she'd given him $1,000 to scare her husband. But when McDavid is brought in for questioning, he denies knowing Diana and having any knowledge of Greg Mulvihill's shooting. I'm asking you where you were at last where you get shot. Why do you want me to tell you that? 
McDavid insists he was at home at the time of the shooting and detectives give him an opportunity to prove it. Can you give me access to your phone to show no. that you were home by 11 o'clock? No, no, I'm not going okay. to do that because, I, yeah, that, that's fine. Well, hey, so listen, there you, you, guys are, you guys are trying to accuse me of No, 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 we're not. Do. Well, yes, yes, you are. Well, I'm trying to find out your version of events, and you're telling me I don't know, and I'm not giving you access to the only thing that you possess, you possess, that shows where you were at. But detectives tell McDavid they already have DNA evidence placing him at the scene of the crime. Any reason why you would have any DNA in there? Now, DNA is something that, that doesn't just fly off and blow down the street. It, you have to go there to put it there. Would you have been there? I might have been there, right? Why would you be here? I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's there. Then McDavid suddenly remembers going jogging there. You went for a run back here? Yeah. And now he realizes he was tripped up by a sudden call of nature. I know what you're talking about. You do? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Explain it. I was on a dirt road just running along. And I did have to That explains it. Well, not quite. How much of a coincidence do you think it would be knowing that the area that you took is the area that Greg was shot at? Detectives tell McDavid he left his DNA on one of two towels found at the crime scene. Did you wipe yourself? Did you use a towel or anything? Yeah. Where'd you get the towel? It was there. Really? Yeah. Are you sure you didn't get it from anywhere else? I didn't get it from anywhere else. I I saw the towels there. But detectives had already discovered those towels at the crime scene matched a set they'd found in Diana Lovejoy's home. And they would also find the assault rifle used to shoot Diana's estranged husband among a huge cache of weapons at McDavid's home. This rifle was found in, a, in the garage up in some rafters, and it was hidden. Now detectives had all the evidence they needed to charge Diana Lovejoy and Weldon McDavid with attempted murder. We arrested both that same day. A somber and humble Diana Lovejoy is led into court in shackles. Doesn't that smell nice? The real housewife of Carlsbad, California, charged with plotting to murder her estranged husband, Greg Mulvihill. And hiring shooting instructor and former Marine, Weldon McDavid, as her hitman. Why did you try them together? Because it is so clear that this is a conspiracy case where they, you know, did this together. Now a lucky to be alive Greg would come face to face with Diana for the first time since the shooting as well as the trigger man Diana allegedly paid a mere thousand bucks to kill him in a late night ambush. The gunman, lying in the sniper position, shoots six to seven more rounds. Greg takes the stand to tell how he'd caught a quick glimpse of McDavid hiding behind some brush with a rifle aimed directly at him. About the time I realized what I was looking at, um, it felt like I had been hit in the back. The next thing I remember was starting to run. As McDavid continues shooting until he and friend Jason Kovach are out of range. And we ran the other direction, away from the, the gunfire. Diana shows no emotion as Greg testifies, and her attorneys continue to deny she had any intention of harming Greg, claiming McDavid was only supposed to scare Greg into staying away from Diana and their little boy after accusing him of sexually abusing both of them. Miss Lovejoy had gone to the Carlsbad Police Department and made a complaint stating that Mr. Mulvihill had sexually assaulted her in her sleep. She said that she suspected that Mr. Mulvihill was molesting her boy. But the court would hear that a Child Protective Services investigation had found no evidence to support Diana's shocking allegations against Greg. He had to go through numerous psychological evaluations. He had to see psychiatrists, psychologists, 
sex therapist. The unanimous conclusion was that he, this was made up, that he had not molested his little boy. And they ended up determining that actually he was the, the better parent of the two. So you don't believe her? Absolutely not. Assistant prosecutor Jody Breton would tell the court Diana simply didn't want to pay Greg his $120,000 share of a house they owned, nor give him shared custody of their son as ordered by a divorce court judge. Instead, the prosecution tells the court Diana chose to kill two birds with one stone by paying Weldon McDavid to kill her child's father. Diana Lovejoy sets about looking for someone, and she finds that someone when she finds Mr. McDavid. But McDavid would testify that, like Diana, he had no intention of harming Greg or the friend that was with him the night of the shooting. I fired six shots in the air, and once they started running, I ceased fire. It's about the strangest offense you will hear for an attempted murder charge. The shooter insists he's such a good shot that if he wanted the ex-husband dead, he'd be dead now. Marines are taught if they wanted to kill someone, two to the center, mass, one to the head. Breton doesn't buy it, telling the court how McDavid had deliberately lured Greg into a death trap with the false promise of selling him information that would help him in his divorce from Diana. And you could discharge a firearm and there'd be no reason for you to call the police and tell them afterwards? I didn't call them because I knew that they would view that as me discharging a firearm, but I was actually defending my life. From a flashlight? Breton alleges McDavid had his rifle cocked and ready to fire before Greg and his friends spotted him. And Breton tells the jury there is only one decision they can make. He's still guilty of attempted murder because he took that one <clears throat> shot. But attorneys for Weldon McDavid and Diana Lovejoy continue to insist they both were only trying to protect her innocent child. He was simply trying to help stop molestation of a three-year-old. The fate of Diana Lovejoy is being left in the hands of the jury, who must decide if she is a ruthless villainess who plotted to kill her husband, Greg Mulvihill, for her own personal gain. I know that you don't have all day. We've got malice to feed. Or if this happy homemaker is actually a concerned mother who claims she was just trying to stop Greg from allegedly sexually abusing their three-year-old son. Now, as the jury is about to deliver its verdict, an anxious Diana sits in court alongside Weldon McDavid, the former Marine she had allegedly hired to shoot Greg in a failed attempt he miraculously survived. And Diana appears to be physically ill, waiting to hear the words that will either set her free or possibly send her to prison for the rest of her life. We, the jury, in the above entitled cause, find the defendant, Diana Jean Lovejoy, guilty of the crime of conspiracy to commit murder in violation of Penal Code Section 182.8. You can see Ms. Lovejoy look over at her defense attorney and like, what happened? Like, just shock disbelief. Now it's time for her accomplice to hear his fate, and Diana Lovejoy just can't take it anymore. We, the jury, in the above account of cause, find the defendant, Weldon K. McDavid, conspiracy to commit murder. <laughs> Diana has suddenly passed out. Her body slumped back in her chair as family members cry and scream in horror. You can kind of see her head go back and her eyes go in the back of her head and she just slumps over. And it was a pretty loud audible clunk when she hit her head on the table and then she kind of spills over onto the floor. Diana still appears to be unconscious as medics carry her from the courtroom on a stretcher. So Quite a bit of chaos. Doctors would find that Diana had only fainted. But Jody Breton suspects Diana might have even faked that. You sound very skeptical. I am skeptical because I just, again, she's somebody who will hire a person to kill her ex-husband. She's someone who will accuse her ex-husband of molesting and sexual assault. So I would not put it all past her. 
Breton isn't sure Diana's tears are real either when she returns to court to make a plea for mercy, still denying guilt and still making the same shocking allegations against Greg. I was sexually abused and I did, I witnessed my son be molested once and I did take all the steps I possibly could to ameliorate that situation. Breton is disgusted that Diana continues to falsely accuse Greg of such an atrocity, especially after a full investigation had found it simply wasn't true and even praised Greg as the better parent. And he genuinely is a nice man. Diana insists she never wanted her son to be without a father. I would never be able to do that. <laughs> Her partner in crime, Weldon McDavid, also turns on the tap. I thought of my son growing up without a father. My father was killed. My father was killed when I was 24, and I still haven't gotten over that. I would not take a father from a child. But the judge appears to be unmoved by anything the two have to say for themselves as he gives them both the max for conspiracy to commit murder and attempted murder. <laughs> Sentencing Weldon McDavid, the trigger man, to 50 years to life. And Diana Lovejoy, who hatched the plot, 26 years to life. Leaving just about everyone except the two co-conspirators and their defense attorneys in full agreement with the judge and jury. What did the jury say afterwards? They didn't believe Mr. McDavid at all, that they thought he was um, narcissistic and uh, was, his story was just absolutely incredulous. There was just nothing, no truth to it. And that Diana was perhaps the worst villain of the diabolical duo. They believe Lovejoy was the manipulator and the, you know, the master behind all of it, that Mr. McDavid would have had no reason to come up with this plot or engage in any of this on his own.